much interest in not only the being recognized by machines um, and in how biopolitics is affecting our identities, um, our concept of life. You have a culture that is really struggling to imagine and to create images. To imagine, to imagine it? To imagine and to create images in their culture, in films, um, stickers, everywhere. Um, towards a definition of life that is undivided. And you see almost these things that we're discussing now, the way we might experience them as controlled or organized subjects, in reverse, projected out into the world. For instance, the images I'm thinking of this sort of possible undivided life um, involve a lot of facial recognition, finding faces in everything. Everything can open its eyes and look at you, from the woods to a robot to a pencil. It can take on life. Everything can like, suddenly be alive. Um, it's as if whatever has been taken away from vegetative life comes back to haunt it. And seen in its pure form, they think of it as the monster, the ghost, or the spirit. But it's still an attempt to maybe connect them again, to make it a sort of form of life that where everything is, there's no such distinction between vegetative or life. Mm -hmm. Makes me think. Uh, uh, yeah, in a way, there is always a kind of dream uh, in modern culture of a, an undivided, uh, inseparable life. I think the, the most uh, clear example is the cartoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cartoon, uh, Mickey Mouse, everywhere. Donald Duck. You cannot uh, divide the uh, years from the way. Mm -hmm. so it's a form of life. The, the cartoon is a perfect form of life. No? How can you divide the uh, but this is a, a, a fantasy in the image. Not, I don't know how, how this can be used as a way for another pattern, perhaps. Well, but it's simple, you know, the, the, world, the cartoon world is a world of form of life. Even the name, animation. Yeah. Pardon? Animation. Even the name suggests animation. This is a, a new phenomenon with the situation that we have reached now, a new society of, of spectacle where everything is mediated, our own identity um, is alienated from our own selves. We are not that and we act as if we are a biometric number. And do you think this is something new or um, there was at some point a pre-fall from race identity where we have? Is it a, a cause of the spectacle or is it a permanent situation? Are we bound in it? Yeah, you can, you can uh, see yourself. I went back to Aristotle. So what, what I think, I, my, my way of uh, investigation is genealogical. Mm -hmm. my, idea, my idea, my methodological idea is that you cannot have access to the present or even understand the present if not through a archaeological movement, going back. So I'm not interested at all in history. And, and when I make a genealogical inquiries, it's not because, because I'm a historian, not because I, I want to reconstruct the history. It's because I think that this is the only way to have access to the present. So I, will, so I will answer, it's uh, contemporary, modern, but the only way to access, to have access to it is archaeological, to go back. But not to go back to an origin, uh, but to make this movement, a regressive movement in order to be contemporary. And to be contemporary, it's not easy. And because uh, being contemporary does not mean to adhere, to speak totally to your time. This is not contemporary. You must have a kind of uh, distance, non-coincidence. You must adhere to non-coincidence. And the archaeological movement is, uh, is, at least for me, is the best way I found to face the present, to understand the present. And I think it is also the in some way, the, how Foucault developed this, uh, this method. Right? So it was it, uh, once he says this very important, very clear statement, uh, my historical investigations are only the shadow cast by 
by my theoretical investigation of the present. So you go back because you have to go back because your your inquiry on the present cast a shadow. Yes. Thank you. And also because I think uh, the present is the most difficult thing to understand. To understand. Why present? Because it is traumatic. Do you know Freud's theory about the trauma? According to Freud, uh, the, the, the boy or uh, the man experiences the trauma, for instance, the boy seeing the parents making blood, or even an accident, a car accident, no? and what happens in the trauma? You completely lose the experience of the brain. You forget everything. No? The trauma, traumatic uh, shock, you forget everything. You remove in the unconscious, according to, to Freud, but then, after a certain time, you will have what he calls the return of the, the repressed. Can you see? Yes, the return of the repressed. The return of the repressed. Return of the repressed. Uh, so, the present, in a way, is what we can never experience because it's always traumatic. Not, not only when you see your parents make love, but. Uh, Everything. Everything. That the presence in some way is what remains unlived, what remains unexperienced. So we have to develop a method to live it, <laughs> to, to, live, to, you know, to make this uh, experience again uh, live. So, uh, this is an archaeology, this is why we see the archaeology. I just wanted to ask a question, um, stepping back just a minute. This a need of personal identification um, in contrast with the remains of presence. Um, there is there's a there, there's a sort of opening for optimism and hope. Or optimism. Optimism and hope that will still maybe take us to another a better place for the use of a really bad phrasing. But there is this ominous sort of thing with biometrics and identification, but it's also a sort of invitation to challenge ourselves. So challenge. An invitation to challenge ourselves to imagine that. Uh, but do you see any way of the No, way? that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not yeah, saying If you find a way. No, but, uh, of, of course the problem is not to go back to the personal identity. But I, don't, I think you cannot stick simply in, in this phase of the biometric because this is really unpleasant in my opinion. Yeah, it can have consequences, it can have a lethal consequence. Just but I'm, I agree with you in a way that doesn't mean that there is no hope. It would push us the sort of possible archy of identification beyond knowledge that isn't represented through machines. So the, a pos a, a, just a ground that really isn't possible. I think what we, we will have, perhaps, in an optimistic uh, perspective, is a third way of identifying, which is no more the personal one, not the biometric one, but a third one. That's the, the most optimistic Pardon? Yes, it's a question about this third space. Foucault, uh, in order to resist the panoptic, uh, wrote about uh, new spaces for the body and for the pleasure. But in this new uh, biometrical panoptic, uh, where are these spaces in order to resist the panoptic? This third space where you are uh, beyond the, the biometric panoptic that takes everything. Yeah, it's, in, in a way, it's more complicated, more difficult to, to find a way. I don't, know, I don't know if even the concept of resistance is the good one, but perhaps good. But it's more. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask, is, is it though possible that the biometric has nothing to do with the body whatsoever? 